What is up everyone? Train Freak here and today we have a layout update. I have done some more work as far as uh, creating the terrain and even giving it a base coat of my ground coat. Um, so as the produce train is going by, being pulled by my only Southern Pacific cab board that I currently own, um, let me go ahead and give you an announcement. Uh, we got Sidetrack Sunday, 8 o'clock Eastern tonight on Ray Bobel's channel. Um, we got a card in the upper right corner. Um, if you can make it, his is probably one of the best ones out of the group of us to join. I mean, needless to say, last month they talked about Hooters. Yeah, Hooters. You know, the restaurant chain you know that sells chicken but yeah hooters so yeah so there's no telling what's going to happen tonight on ray's channel so make sure you're there um but as the train's going by um i can go ahead and kind of tell you some of the things i've worked on and some of the things that i plan on doing in the future um so I went ahead and plastered some more, which we'll get to in a minute. I've also, you know, did that live stream doing the um, sound installation for a friend of mine. Um, he's actually kind of like a customer, but he's a friend of the hobby shop too, uh, Lucian. And uh, that was his uh, Dash 9 that I worked on the other night. So he didn't get a chance to catch me. Uh, actually installing a sound card and troubleshooting some issues that I did run into um, that is definitely a great a great way because I mean I'll go ahead and admit I'm not a professional when it comes to that um, so you see the mistakes that I make even being a factory trained installer through soundtracks themselves I even make mistakes but I go and show how you can troubleshoot those mistakes as well so um, but yeah, if you haven't had a chance, definitely check that out. Um, I don't expect you to watch all two and a half hours of it. I think the last 30 minutes was kind of more just beating around the bush. But needless to say, if you are wanting to learn how to install sound decoders, that's definitely a great video for you to go look at. All right, so the meat, or not the meat, but the produce train should have already went by by now. So let's go ahead and show you the corner that I've worked on by adding more plaster and by adding some color to it. Just a generic color, but some color. And I'll show you what I've done and I'll kind of explain everything as to why I did what I've done. All right, so be right back. All right, so this is how I add the plaster uh, to my screened in area, which we've already done a little bit here. Um, so basically I take a ice cream scoop full of plaster of Paris and try not to dump it on the layout like I just did but it's okay if you do because you can always get it and use it later all right then the next thing you want to do is you want to take some water and you want to pour just a little bit of water in there because you want a good runny mixture because you can always go back and add uh, more plaster or powder, you know, in your runny mixture. It's harder to add more water to it. So, so you can see here it's pretty runny. So that's good. But we got a few chunks that are surfacing to the top. And you want to keep mixing until you don't have any bubbles. Um, bubbles just tell you that there's just a lot of air still in it so we're just going to keep going till all the bubbles are out and if it's super runny kind of like how it is right now we can stop take our ice cream scoop and get you know just a little bit more not a whole lot because you don't you know you want to add in small increments and see if we can't just thicken it up just a little bit more and it's still pretty runny which is good but as it starts setting it'll start getting just a tad bit thicker and so 
And what you can always do is do a test. So I'm just gonna kinda pour it right there. If it just bubbles down and goes through your screen, then it's not thick enough. So we're gonna take just a little bit more and add to our mixture and mix that in. You want it a little runnier than a pudding. So something just a tad bit runnier than pudding. That's, that's the ideal mixture. Because you want it runny enough that it will contour um, to your, you know, your, your design, but you don't want it thick to where it's like a paste. All right, so let's see how this does right here. All right, so that's actually pulling up a little on the top, like so. Now it's gonna run a little and that's fine, but we just don't want it to run all over the place. But you can see that it is mostly staying where I am pouring. Kind of like a slow ooze. I had a few people ask me on the last video exactly how I did all of this. And it's, it's just this simple. Now some people are saying, well, you don't have to use aluminum screen that you can set it straight on top of the paper. And they are exactly right. You can do it that way. Um, but what I've noticed in years in the past that when you do it that way, your uh, plaster is more susceptible to uh, cracking, you know, especially due to um, the uh, expanding and contracting. So, all right, so I'm pretty well pleased of this pour right here. And unfortunately, all you can do is literally wait for your stuff to dry. But in the meantime, we're just gonna take our fingers and gently rub the, uh, this plaster in. And it might cover everything and it might not. And you might make holes and if you do, it's fine. You can always come back. But this is gonna give your plaster a good natural texture as it starts to dry because we all know that the earth in itself is not smooth. So, so just kinda, you can go up and down, side to side, just whatever gives it that smooth texture. And like I said, if you accidentally start knocking some off, that's completely fine. Um, you're just kind of wanting this to dry in place and you can always come back on top of it and it will actually give your next pour something uh, to hold on to but like I said that aluminum window screen that I'm using it just more or less acts like rebar you know they don't pour concrete without rebar so think of the plaster as your concrete and think of the rebar or the aluminum screen as your rebar. And then of course, the only thing the newspaper's doing is just help holding that shape. So, and that's kinda where we're at. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get the last of this finished and uh, then I plan on painting. Um, I'll, I can go ahead and start painting these two back here because they've been done for a while. This will have to cure for uh, 24 to 48 hours before I start putting paint on it. So, but yeah, that's what I'm gonna do next is paint these two, these two back here. So, alrighty, 
I'll be back with you in here in a little while. All right, so we went ahead and painted. I done some more plastering. I went ahead and put my building back. Um, I might move it later, who knows. But you can kind of see the difference of the color. So this is just a base brown color, and I do go ahead and paint the sides of the road bed and the edge of the ties because once I ballast that, you're really not going to be able to see it um, for the most part because the ballast is going to kind of go over it. But the top of the ties, um, you know, I might have to clean up some of it, and that's okay. I've got a little pick. It's like a miniature ice pick that I can use to do that. And anytime I do any type of painting, um, I will go over with my CMX cleaning car with the uh, denatured alcohol, which is basically a paint uh, thinner or paint remover. So that's definitely no issue. Um, I've had some people ask me, well, why do you not put tape, even painter's tape, on top of it? And that's because the painter's tape actually leaves a slight residue on your rails, and you're going to have to clean your rails anyways. So, and of course, I'm going to have to repaint the rails because um, I just don't like this color. I'm going to repaint them something else. And even the Code 100, I will repaint those. Now, I do have a little bit of plaster in there, but like I said, I'll get that pick and get it out. There's nothing on top of the rail. Um, you just saw it with the uh, the train going by. Um, yeah, that train right there. So, it's got just a few cars of produce. Not a whole lot. But um, So, let me explain how I did this. Um, I took, with this backdrop here being removable, I took it out. I've got grabbed another small piece of masonite stuck down in its place um, when I did the painting. I should have done that when I did the uh, plaster, but I didn't think about it at first. Um, but the plaster doesn't have to be really up against it here because at eye level, you're not going to be able to see it because of this front one here. Now, last week, this was still screen and it was still, um, you know, screen and newspaper. So I actually got plaster on this um, a few days ago, and it finally cured, so I went ahead and painted it today. And, of course, once I flock it, um, and this is just the first coat. I'll have to put the second coat on there. But once I flock it, you know, put some shrubs in there, heavy amount of trees, I mean, you're not going to be able to see if this is up against the backdrop or not. And, I mean, even on the very back here, I left a gap on purpose. And I didn't even plaster all of that in because there's really no point of it. So, yeah, I mean, the trees are going to are gonna hide every bit of that. Um, so, now, the section that's still white, I actually plastered that today, and it's still, it still feels a little moist to the touch. So, I'm not going to mess with it. And then, you know, the hill kind of just slights, comes down, but I'll start building it back up over here for this side uh for you know the uh balloon loop as it comes out of that hole now that hole is going to be a lot harder to cover up than the first one or these two over here because here the trains are kind of going parallel at a diagonal um this one here um you can actually stand and see the train coming towards you so that one's going to be a little more difficult to hide but um, I'm going to do my best to see what I can do on that to make that happen. It's probably just going to require a ton of trees. And I mean a ton of trees. So, and if these uh, trees through Scenic Express go the way I want them to go, then uh, they're definitely going to get a lot of my business. So, uh, but yeah, so this is where I'm at. So the next stage would be to the back hill first uh repaint it again and start flocking the mess out of it um to kind of hide that brown now when i repaint it the second time on the sides and stuff i've got different color of um, primers i've got like an almond um kind of like a purplish gray i've got like three four different colors and i'll just spray like a little tap spray in there while the base coat is wet and this is oil based by the way too so that primer just really mix in and when i do that um it's like the colors will blend each other and while all of that is still wet that's when i'll start shaking the flock on top of it 
and that paint kind of acts like mod mod podge in a way um you know it'll help hold that flock down in there it gives it gives it the texture that you want and then i will come back and do a gloss mod podge um on top of it um so to fully seal it in and when i do that i will have to put some newspaper or something in front of the backdrop so i don't spray the backdrop so but yeah that's uh, kind of where we're at and so i'm thinking about you know oh yeah i didn't even mention this so this is masonite right here so i actually took some of that plaster and just kind of smoothed it around to make it look like we have a raised foundation for our building to go on let you see this side too you can kind of see that side a little better and if i need to i can sand some of this down or what i might do is add a little more and make this like the parking over here on this side even though the office is on this side um, because i want my road right here or i can make the road just a little gravel road wrap around the building and i can put my parking over here so there's different ways we can go about doing this but you know definitely that's where the box car will be spotted for either unloading or loading um, unloading materials or loading the toilets themselves which we got some on a pallet right there and so uh, for those who are interested in this building this is actually from menards um, you can go to your local menards if you have one for me it's a few hours away or you could easily order online um, and it does light up. I do not have it plugged in right now, um, but I have it. I've had it plugged in on previous um, videos. But these little scone lights light up. There's three flashing reds on the top. The toilet does spin, and then there's a LED strip underneath that lights up as well. And then there's a LED strip behind the sign too. So the sign you can't really see when you got the lights on on camera, but there you go. Gamer and Thrones, manufacturers and purveyors of fine virtuous china stools and laws established in 1898. So, a pretty neat little building, um, I gotta say. So, but yeah. And then, eventually once I work my way over here, I will put in some more hill terrain. Um, I might add on to that right there and just kind of work my way over. I don't know yet. Or I might leave a little gap um who knows i mean there's so many different ways we could go about doing this and i might even put a few trees right here between uh these tracks too so um definitely a lot of potential as far as scenery goes and like i said this is where i'm focusing now on the layout i could go ahead and build more bench work uh, on the next wall but once i get this done here then i can start expanding uh, in the middle of the balloon loop and go ahead and start figuring out how to add a couple more industries and go from there so this is like i said this is currently where i'm at uh, don't have much else to speak upon it so hopefully uh, getting some more scenery done on it will be great and yeah then i can move on so other than that like i said Earlier, we got Sidetrack Sunday, 8 o'clock tonight, Eastern, on Rainbow Bell's channel. Uh, link is down in the description. Actually, all the STS members' links are down in the description. So, uh, make sure you go and check out his channel tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern. And other than that, I'm going to let y'all have at it. Y'all be safe out there. I wish y'all a great week. Uh, extended thank you to all of my channel supporters through Patreon, PayPal, and Teespring. And other than that, y'all be safe and happy railroading.